Hey everybody, back for another review of a game called For a Vast Future. Also, welcome to any new subscribers who have joined the channel. I had a Monster Hunter video dropped just recently that got some really good love and I really do appreciate it. It was a fun video to make, a lot of editing, a lot of time, but it really encapsulated a lot of my ideas that I had for the game. But thank you so much for tuning into that. But if you are new for the first time, if you're hearing a review from me, I don't do review scores of games. All I do is that I give you the history of the game with a description, some positives, some negatives and finish up with some final thoughts. Let's get into it. The history of Four Vast Future started in 2020. It started as a two-man project but quickly expanded to four core team members. It is the first retro games project to feature outside collaborators who have heavily shaped the finished product. It was released on Steam in 2022 and then on the Switch on May 12th, 2023, which is what you're seeing now. I, this is my Switch gameplay. The publisher is Red Deer Games. I've heard that this game takes inspiration from the Earthbound series, but I haven't played any of those games other than playing Ness and Lucas and Smash. Does that really count? I mean, really, does it count if I if I played just those games? Probably not, but let's get into the description. It says that the war has ended in Sorelia, but the scars are far from healed. Decades of fighting have ended in a stalemate. The citizens are left to pick up the pieces. Precocious teenager Shell embarks on a cross-country trip to unravel the secrets of a missing generation. Along the way, she meets loyal comrades and otherworldly foes. Sorelia may be in ruins, but a new day is dawning. The gameplay is turn-based, fast, active time combat. Instead of traditional RPG-like weapons like swords, there is an ammo system. Each character uses a gun that is able to equip various bullet types, ranging from basic, fire, ice, explosion, pierce, etc. There are a ton of mini type ammo types. I personally like the desperate type, which I'll explain that a little bit later, but each type is useful depending on the weakness of the enemies. It's basically Pokemon rules. Ammo is shared between the parties, so you have to be careful when using specific ammo types. But the game is generous as when you defeat enemies, you get ammo and items. This can be increased based on increasing the skills of your party and you have complete customization. Character stat progression and weapon proficiencies are entirely up to you, like increased marksmanship, armor, and luck, which increases the amount of items you get after a fight. There is a unique crafting system that you can use to create attack items known as war gear to buff and debuff items for unique strategies. A good example is to use oil to make an enemy weak to fire or an explosion, or to use water to make them weak to electric attacks. You eventually get the ability to ride a motorcycle through the war-torn countryside. It acts as a fast travel between various locations found. There's also a nice option to choose between numerous classically inspired color palettes. You'll notice the color palette changes throughout this video just to keep it a little bit more interesting. Let's get into some positives. I loved the intriguing story of the state of this dystopian world and how it came to be. As I progressed through the game and learned more about the lore, I was very drawn in. It's crazy to think that a retro Game Boy style looking game would draw me into its story, especially when there's not even any voice acting. While I initially did not like the main character of Shell at the beginning of the game, as she was portrayed as a very selfish child only out for herself, her personality actually grew on me as she was a nice change from your standard idealist protagonist. But Dar, Tarn, and Pent helped flesh out the world through their various backstories, and I also really enjoyed Dar's portrayal of a robot overcoming his programming. I love a good RPG, but they can be so long at times, and I love that this game story was very short and sweet by RPG standards. You'll get about six to eight hours of playtime, depending on how much you wanted to do. I probably spent more time than normal because I wanted to make sure I was strong enough, so a lot of grinding in me. I love to do the grind and make sure that I'm strong enough to beat some of the harder boss fights, especially when you get towards the back half of the game, but also appreciate that you do get only four members that you have to manage throughout the duration of the game. You also get him fairly quickly. You get all four party members at probably the first 10% of the game. So it's good to note that you don't have to manage a ton of party members. The combat was easy to figure out, especially when you knew the enemy's weaknesses, and it felt great when you had good synergy between bullet types. The desperate bullet, like I mentioned earlier, became one of my go-tos as your attacks got much higher the less health you have. There was also a good variety of enemy designs from animals to bandits to cultists to robots to monsters and even ghosts for some reason. And each one felt unique and had to be dealt with in specific ways. Now, 
there's not a whole lot of negatives to this game in my mind, but I think one of the biggest negatives to this game is that it was very much lacking in sound effects in the combat. There was no sound effects when attacking enemies or status effect sounds, so it was very weird when I would hit an enemy and there was no sound present and I didn't hear anything that indicated that something was hit. This could have made the game so much better and led it to more immersion. I think even older Pokemon games even did that, but for some reason this was left out of the game. I'm not sure why I was cut, but hopefully there would be an update to this game that would include sound effects in the future. So I would hope that they would include that at some point. But overall, this was a fun and short RPG that is a nod to all the classics that you know and love. If you are looking for something that takes you back to the old Game Boy Danes on a modern twist, this one is for you. The story is engaging, the characters are fun, and the combat is also engaging. I definitely recommend for a vast future but let me know if you have played it or are playing it right now let me know what you think in the comments thank you so much for watching this review and i appreciate all the support that this channel has gotten it's been so much fun to create this content for you y'all are the best feel free to check out any of the other reviews or the lps or any other content that i have going on and i got more coming out in the future it's going to be a fun summer there's still more to show you and i can't wait thanks again my name is chike and i will see you next time Bye.